Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu Karibuni Tanga, greetings from Tanga Today I'm in a different town which is around 250 kilometers from the city of Dar es Salaam Now this town definitely has a sizable Muslim population and it's also an ancient Kiswahili town A lot of ancient history and so on can be found in this town and in the surrounding areas like Pangani and different places like that In fact, Tanga was actually one of the Germans main base during their colonial rule here in German East Africa So today I'll be walking around exploring Tanga a little bit to some extent seeing what the local vibe is like so i'll be taking you on this journey with me karibuni tanga welcome to tanga and we'll be exploring it today if you're new to the channel do consider liking sharing and subscribing to the channel by clicking on the red box below this video that says subscribe so guys i'm really happy that you are joining me on this journey today it's definitely a different vibe today of course you've known me a lot i've been vlogging a lot in dar es salaam switching it up a little bit we're exploring other areas there's more to tanzania than just dar es salaam and tanga is definitely a place i recommend you visit it's a coastal town very very beautiful coastal town and it's one of the affordable areas in terms of living if you're staying here for some time it's quite affordable you can even get a room in Tanga for up to 10,000 Tanzanian shillings a night and that's around 4 US dollars uh, and even in pounds sterling, sterling that will be around 3 pounds 25 so it's really nice so let me just show you what I'm seeing in front of me right now and you'll get a vibe of the place get a vibe of Tanga guys beautiful Tanga is both the name of the most northerly port city of Tanzania on the west of the Indian Ocean and the capital of the Tanga region. It has a population of over 300,000 people in the city of Tanga. The name Tanga means sail in the Kiswahili language. An alternative meaning is farmland. Tanga is also the bicycle riding capital of Tanzania. It's the only city in the country that offers a bicycle taxi as a service. Major exports from the port of Tanga includes sisal, coffee, tea and cotton. Tanga is also an important railroad terminus connecting much of northern Tanzania interior with the sea via the Tanzania Railways Corporation link line and central line. Tanga is a link to the Africa Great Lake region and the Tanzania economic capital of Dar es Salaam. The city is served by the Tanga Airport. The harbor and the surrounding is the center of life in Tanga. It has several markets in several neighborhoods. The earliest documentation about Tanga comes from the Portuguese. A trading post was established by the Portuguese as part of the East African coastal territory and controlled the region for over 200 years, between 1500 and 1700. The Sultanate of Oman battled the Portuguese and gained control of the settlement by 1700s, along with Mombasa, Pemba Island and Kilwa Kiswani. The town continued to act as a trading port for ivory and kidnapped people under the Sultan's rule. Tanga continued to be a prosperous and trading hub for kidnapped people, also known as slaves, with the Arab world up until 1873 when the European powers allegedly abolished the slave trade. In the 19th century, growing interest by the Europeans for the scramble of Africa brought the Germans to Tanga. The Germans bought the coastal strip of mainland Tanzania from the Sultan of Zanzibar in 1891. This takeover designated Tanga into a township and was the first establishment in German East Africa. The town became the center of German colonial administration before the establishment of Dar es Salaam in the early 20th century. Tanga was chosen in 1889 as a military post of German East Africa and it became a district office in 1891. 
The town saw rapid expansion and planned growth under the German occupation. The tram line was developed within the city to facilitate domestic transport and a port was built to facilitate exports. In 1896, the construction of the Usambara Railway began and was extended to Moshi by 1912. Roads, bridges, and the railway facilitated industrial growth in the region, and many buildings and bridges that are still in operation today in the town are from the German colonial period. The local economy was based mainly on the production of sisal, which had been brought to the colony several years earlier, and the population in the area grew rapidly. As the coastal town closest to the British East Africa, Kenya, Tanga was on the front line at the outset of World War I. A British landing was thrown back on the 4th of the 11th, 1914, in the Battle of Tanga, and the town was not taken until the 7th of July, 1916. After the war, Britain gained control of Tanganyika and continued to develop the town and exploits its agricultural potential. In 1919, Tanga was the country's fourth largest cent city. However, at independence, the second largest city, it became the second largest city after Dar es Salaam. So one of the things you will notice, like I was saying, you will see a lot of the bicycle taxis. Now that's a bicycle. Now this town is quite unique for that. You won't find that in, in other towns here in Tanzania. But also in neighboring countries like Kenya, the western part of Kenya, and even places like Nakuru, you will still find bicycle taxis as well. So you can also see that in Kenya but it is unique here in Tanga so if you ever visit you can maybe try getting on a bicycle behind and going for a little ride now one of the things I like about Tanga it's a real nice laid-back feel you know people do have a sense of business but everything it doesn't feel fast-paced it's quite calm and people are just getting on with their daily activities. I do like visiting a city that offers this kind of feeling, especially when you're coming from a country which could be quite hustle and bustle and fast paced. You do appreciate the slower paces of life when you visit towns like Tanga. Now I did mention that there, there is a sizable Muslim population in Tanga and I'm sure as we're walking around you're probably noticing that. And that's one of the unique features you will find in many of the coastal towns in East Africa. Now Islam definitely had a strong impact on the east coast of Africa, especially the coastal towns, you will see that in Mombasa, Tanga, Lamu, Melindi, go right up to Somalia, you will find these, these things, especially in the coastal towns. But nevertheless, here in Tanga, there's also Christians and people of other faith, and people live side by side with each other. And generally speaking, there isn't any um, religious fighting or re religious conflicts or anything like that generally speaking so it's it's still a peaceful vibe here amongst the various communities that live here
So we're walking up to the one of the bus stands, the Dala Dala, and you can take you to various areas here in the Tanga region. Now, of course, the capital city of the Tanga region is Tanga City, but you have also other surrounding areas in the region. From Tanga, it's also very close to Mombasa. Now, Mombasa is about, by bus, it's around three and a half hours by bus to Mombasa and you can get a bus from Tanga to go there. And this area here, you will find one of the companies that operate, that will take you to Mombasa. We're walking up to them right now, so you'll probably see that in a minute. So to my right, you can see the sign there that says Tamid and they travel to Kenya and Uganda as well. So very interesting that you can get a bus from here. So for those who may be traveling on to Kenya and you want to visit Mombasa, you can certainly check, you can definitely get to Mombasa from here. These are the border border motorbikes. So you have bicycles and motorbike taxis in, in Tanga. I really like the colorful garments that the, that, that is adorned on the woman here. Look at this lady here in the green and yellow. Simply beautiful. It really goes with a nice tropical vibe that you get in this region. And the bright colors is truly amazing that you see here. So to my right here, what you're noticing is basically some makeshift stores that are being set up, roadside stores, and they're selling different things from um, bags, clothing, some are new clothing, some are secondhand clothing. You have mosquito nets and, and you know other household items that people will need and use on their day-to-day -day living. One thing you'll notice, um, especially once you start traveling to other, you know, smaller towns away from places like Dar es Salaam, a lot of people don't generally like to be on um, camera. So I did try to speak to some people earlier and they, they didn't really want to be on camera. So these are one of the, the um, 
I wouldn't say challenge. I mean, everyone has the right if they don't want to be on there. I respect it. Um, but yeah, just one thing you do have to bear in mind when you visit here. I guess people are a bit camera shy. They don't understand the reason why someone will be walking on the streets filming. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the vibe. So far in comparison to, to Dar es Salaam, I've seen the most bicycles in Tanga. Uh, the most bicycle I've seen in Tanzania so far definitely is in Tanga. And it's the old, old type of bicycle as well. The old type, of, it's, it's a classical look. These ones were in England, like maybe in the 1950s these style of bikes it really the, the town still maintain its colonial feel and the fact that Germany had a great influence on this town I can, I can definitely um, feel that in terms of the architecture of the place the bicycles people are riding you definitely do feel that when you're walking here Tanga is definitely a place you can, it can be a base for you as well because from here you can explore the other ruins like there's the Pangani ruins and there, there's also certain um, Abuni caves as well Ambuni caves and different things like that so you can really ex explore some of these landmarks and your base could be here in Tanga and what's unique about it, like I was saying, is the affordability of actually being here. Now, in comparison to Dar es Salaam, Tanga is certainly much more affordable cost-wise. Now, everyone has different budgets. So for those who may be on a budget, you may want to look at Tanga on your itinerary, even for finding accommodation if you maybe want to stay for more than three months. There's certainly various accommodation in this area which you'll pay much less in comparison to bigger cities like Dar es Salaam. And you do get a sense of culture here. I'm, I'm going to explore that actually. You do get a sense of culture here because there's different traditional dances that happens here. And in fact, if you really want to brush up on your Kiswahili, one of the ancient Swahili towns, a lot of people speak the language, you can really interact and mingle with the locals here. So definitely give Tanga a try. Now Tanzanians do enjoy football, they support, they watch it here, the British Premier League and other leagues in Europe and on the streets here are adorned with various t-shirts representing various clubs and also local clubs here in Tanzania and from other countries so these are some of the things that you expect to see on some of these makeshift roadside stalls.
this right here is de definitely has a lot of colonial history here. Now, the, 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 this train line was built during the German rule here in Tanzania, and it's for, for mainly for well, initially it was for domestic use and for also transporting goods to other regions here in Tanzania so this is what you know the train line would look like definitely the Germans left their colonial mark here on this town but I would say this there's a mixture of people here in Tanga mixture of people because of course you'll have the indigenous people that are here then you also have people who have background from the Omani people so you do get people that have that um, Arab background and you also have people from Asian background here and of recent you got other people that have, my, of, that have migrated in the area and have contributed to the mix. So, most definitely, it's a, a mixed bunch of people here, but the language of Kiswahili definitely unites them and people can communicate and interact with each other in an effective way using that language. One of the unique features that I'm seeing here so far in Tanga. Wow. So, if you go online and you look for some hotels here in Tanga, you'll notice that you'll find expensive hotels. And when I say expensive, I mean for some people they'll find it expensive. Everyone has different budgets, to be fair. But I know a lot of people have asked me about the, getting the best deal and reasonable price being on a certain budget. But what you just seen there is how a lot of these hotels, which are more affordable, are advertised. They don't have an internet presence, a lot of them. They're not online. But if you visit Tanga, you'll see different signs like what you just seen there that talks about where you can go for a hotel. So right in front of me here is the Tanga railway station now we just saw the railway that i showed you that was of course built during the german rule here and to some extent the station is used from time to time it seems closed today but this is what the station looks like very clean Nicely done. The colors, very interesting colors. It does somehow, they have modernized it, but it does still have a very colonial feel to it. And I guess the reason why I'm saying that is perhaps with how quiet the place is, the laid back feel of the place. When you walk into this building, you can definitely tell it has a lot of history here so it does have a real colonial feel just walked from the railway station and I've came up to a nice little garden there's a seating area really nice vibe I'm going to show it to you right now and it seems to be a very central location here in Tanga let me show you what I'm saving me so there's a sign that says Pendis Zesha Gigi Lako Latanga Usi Tupe Taka Uvio and that translates something like love the city of Tanga love your city of Tanga 
and take away your rubbish so don't basically don't litter in the area here so this is the vibe really lovely park let's walk in and see what we see let's have a little wonder let's have a little explore really nice loving the vibe the parks seem to be fairly well maintained lovely plants growing people are literally just sitting some people are sitting under the shade there some people are standing on the side over there so it's a nice vibe we seem to have something that looks almost like a rocket and on the top is this Tanga, uh, Tanga City Council, Meendeleo, kind of like let's go. So this is really nice. I really like when you come to a town, you can find these lovely gardens. Nice place for you to, to chill, you know. And surrounding it, as you can see over there, there are people sitting down. So that's really nice here. real mixture of the architecture what you will find in Tanga actually you do get a bit of the Arab feel here of course because you do have a strong Islamic influence and of course from the colonial past with the Germans and also at once upon a time like I said to you earlier the Portuguese so it's definitely um, a, a real mixture of architectural designs you'll see here and the streets in Tango are very wide you know it's lo lots of room lo lots of space it's a really nice feel if you've been to places like um, Kisumu and these places you you know you will notice once you leave the congestion from like the smaller towns and you go to these areas it, you, you immediately feel how wide and how many how much space you have when you enter these towns and definitely this is how I feel here in Tanga so I'm literally walking up to the Tanga library and um, it's known to stack a lot of books Kiswahili English even in Al Arabiya in Arabic Arabic books so this is a place where definitely a lot of students come and you can see some of the services that are available things like photocopying and doing your passport applications online all of that is available and literally right on the right of me here this is actually a police station for the Mkoa Tanga region here so today is a Sunday so um not sure if it, it, it the library is open today but this is what you expect to see when you come to like the entrance area so it's known today as the Tanga library but it was formerly known as as it says formerly King George V Memorial Library so that what, it, what the library was called previously but it's no longer called that anymore it's, today it's called just the Tanga library Now, one of the things you will like about this library, if you do visit, okay, yeah, you might not be interested in maybe checking out the books, but one of the things you will find is this lovely garden, which is right on the side of the library. 
and as you walk you get a very beautiful view of the of the coastline here in Tanga really beautiful and it's a lovely cool breeze especially on a hot day it's really nice when you have the breeze you know it keeps you cool there's also a cafe nearby and people sell walking around selling drinks and different things like that so it's definitely a good vibe here wow absolutely amazing guys now i remember i was telling you tanga it's the second um has the second busiest port here in tanzania so you do get to see in the distance there a bit of the sea the ocean and a bit of the port as well let's walk a little bit this is a mango tree guys when you come to the Tanga region you'll notice that you see a lot of mangoes and coconut trees if you've been to the Caribbean before it does give you a real Caribbean feel here in the Tanga region really lovely garden really really lovely garden guys almost like a um, little island on its own over there I don't know if you can see in the distance let me zoom, zoom in closer you do get a lot of these kind of um, mini islands out here in Tanzania and different parts of um, East Africa Right here there's um, a cafe, you can come here and eat and there's even a little play area for children. There's some swings and some slides, there's also like pool tables so I guess you know with the library when you have a lot of students coming these are some of the things they will do to socialize as well when they come here apart from enjoying the views see children are having some ice cream coming out with their family families so this is really nice guys i'm really liking it so far really liking the vibe here in tanga Okay, I'm gonna end the vlog right here and I do trust that you have had a joyful experience watching today's episode. I do appreciate your time and do consider liking, sharing and subscribing to the channel by clicking on the red box below this video that says subscribe. My name is Wemba Imani and thank you for watching Inspire for Travel.